Bounty hunter. Dire team pick. Beastmaster. Dire team back. Radiant team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. seconds remaining five seconds remaining I should have seen that one coming radiant team pick seconds remaining five seconds remaining reserve time witch doctor Rubik. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining five seconds remaining reserve time wind ranger at your service queen of pain radiant <laughs> team back remaining five seconds remaining reserve time <laughs> dire team back seconds remaining five seconds remaining reserve time oh. radiant team pick legion commander Dire team pick. Juggernaut.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I mentioned the one drawing on the minimap. It's so, so talented. 
that probably would sell for like two million dollars or something. No, I actually know the guy who owns the effigy for killing uh, in, in TI5, the uh, Echo Slam by Universe. Yeah, I know the guy who was selling that effigy, sold it for like 500 bucks. Yeah. But actually, it's, it's worth more, so just uh, give it time. Yeah. Well, do do you know the most expensive item sold on Dota 2? Like, uh, it's, uh, no, it's uh, no, Ursa is actually uh, pretty cheap. It's the Legacy Pink uh, War Dog. It was sold for 38k dollars. Yeah, do you know Pada from Pain Gaming? Pain Gaming. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the the uh, the owner, the, the co-founder, or founder of the team is called Pada. He's one of the biggest traders. So yeah, he sold it for 38k. That's uh, really cute. <laughs> Again, guys, I forgot to put my mic on. <laughs> At least now I did it during the cast. They could only hear me in-game. It didn't matter too much that they don't hear me on the stream because it's just bullshit anyway. It's not really a whole lot. But I'll just repeat a little bit of everything is that I have said. This is round number 64 between NSA and Kaipi. If Kaipi can win this one, they're true. Same goes for NC, of course, and... Uh, Having all of that said, the teams here, NSC, they're all about just getting the death ball going. Going five manning, taking down towers, down by down by one. The big timing that they have is uh, the Hand of God and the Queen of Pain. Those are the cooldowns they will need to be working around for Kaipi. It's, uh, it's about stopping the push, getting the items as fast as possible to stop it and just make sure nothing really weird happens. So, before the horn has blown, at least I got my mic back. <laughs> Having that said, I'm standing with me, is born now on the stats. We're bringing you this uh, coverage of this game. So, yeah. So for all the people after the draft, we're, you're going to be able to hear it. I think I just gave away that we have a long pass coming up to everybody in the chat here, but okay, let's just focus on the game for now as I've already uh, bullshitted uh, too much, <laughs> I would say here. And okay. Let's see how everything is going right now. So, just focusing down the board here from one. Really annoying for uh, them. They don't want to give them the double board. It's really just too strong against the support bone seven. It seems to be just a okay with farming it all up here. I don't think it will be contested too much over there. Well, the Chen, he is uh, already setting up for something, or he just needs making sure that he's not too easily spotted. Well, here can so he's just showing what a Wind Ranger does against uh, a Queen of Pain. You go in a little bit more aggressive. Every time she puts a potion, you pop Wind Run and you just start right clicking at her, and you usually win the fight. Then, or usually, you pretty much always win the fight. You just have more base damage as well as a better attack animation. And look at this power shot. This is gonna kill him. Mistakes were made here by nine six six. There was absolutely no reason for him to stick around for so long. 
Ooh, smart Chen here, putting those sentries, making sure that Bovni really just can't get too much of that easy experience. Or at least steal so much of that easy experience. Oh, the fourth one just had Damn, pretty nice. Yeah, usually when you have people picking up a Chen, they usually have like this strong Chen player who can actually play it, especially in something like this. This is of course a, a qualifier for a major. You're not picking up just for the fun, so you pick it up because you actually can do something with it. And you can see your Anise. Can you actually look up what Anise, how many times I've picked him up? It would be to help me out a lot. I don't want to go for a gank here. Buffney is ready. Oh, Sheko comes out and NC. They're just ready for him to jump back. But Buffney can't get close enough for, to get uh, Janada hit in. He's going to survive. But that will mean that he has to either go back to base or he's going to be bottle growing here. He's going to be bottle growing. He will go back ASAP. Not dropping his items to regen a bit more. That surprises me a bit. But okay. It's still okay. All's good. See Firkin. So far, I haven't really been able to uh, stop Kia here. He's getting a lot of experience. You would say that this uh, lane here between a Rubik and a Juggernaut has a lot of killing potential on pretty much anybody. Just by spinning, you can't really block him anymore or stun him. So it's just really just one telekinesis, but the lane is a bit for forward. Maybe Chen has to try and get a, a pool going. It wouldn't be too bad. A lot of hate coming out on KP in the chat, but I want to remind everybody here, they got into... Oh, there you go, they finally got the kill on the Earthshaker. Kind of like expected, it was just bound to happen somewhere. He did get already get like level 3, so it's not too bad. Anyhow, there's a lot of hate coming out, and I don't really get this one, to be 100% honest, because they were in the finals yesterday. So... It's not like they're a bad team or anything. Mama's boys was just a bit too strong for them. Songafoon, still farming it up pretty nicely here. Bounty Hunter is more focusing on the mid lane and the bottom lane right now than he is on the jungle. He could have just, you know, stay by him all the time and just completely destroy his life. Man, I'm just really missing the kills right now. I'm not really there 100%. <laughs> oh okay. yeah, sorry about that, guys. But uh, the bounty in mid finally paid off again. They get a kill with the haste as well and cancel. And yeah, he's already been put set back pretty hefty here. 12 to 20 as well as just being two deaths behind is, is pretty hard to deal with. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That is at least a full level behind, almost two. As this creep wave is going to be a little bit more even, but still, it's it's not really going too well there. Let's see. Soaring, almost completed, just uh, a little bit of gold off. At least these uh, pools will give him some more. Uh, ward drop down in inside their own center range, so it's safe. No sentries on the yard check anyway. Oh, we said okay. They have a sentry just left, so I don't. That's the reason why uh, not going uh, top with the bounty hunter. Which is dangerous. By the worldling ripper uh, walking around with his camp. These new camps, this camp here especially, just makes pulling on the dire side so easy for both the enemy offlaner as well as, as you yourself on the radiant side. And Shaco still is here on the Beastmaster. A lot of damage coming out. They need a little bit more, but they should be more than <laughs> able to provide that damage. Just to pick up a kill here on the Beastmaster number one. Seems like at the same time they're gonna go for a, 
A gank here with the Chen. He has his creeps ready. And he say, is there ready as well with the Rubik? Gonna walk in. Oh, Fisher has been used now. Oh, that's pretty much go time. He walks in. He's a little bit too close. We'll get stunned by it, but uh, there we go. All the stuns follow-ups are there. Now the fucking Matt comes in. And might, uh, they're gonna try and turn this one around. They should be able to get at least one. And now Strong Guy, he's gonna go down as well. Fucking Matt is low, but he's he got full restoration. He's just gonna heal up as well as so health off. They can keep on going. And now Furrican. He can only slash if he wants to, but that doesn't matter. As a shuriken gets thrown in his face. Double kill for Buffney. As they pick up three kills here on the top lane. What looked out to be a nice gank got completely destroyed after a nice rotation and TP's in from the side of Kaipi. Oh, uh, nice. He said so far back, just 20 CS. If he ever walks forward, Bones ever just duels him. <laughs> They're gonna try and do something now with Cancel rotating in. Gonna look for Shackle Shot and from there they wanna go. He's running in, Shackle Shot, oh it connects. Okay, Shackle Shot is not gonna let, it's, oh man, this is so perfectly timed here. That's gonna be the first duel victory here for Bone7, that makes 1055 here. At the same time on top here, Kia. He was soaring to get off an enchant totem, he needs to walk back a little bit more, but he should be safe for now. And this was not actually Omni Slash use, he still has it on uh, of cooldown. Just doesn't have the mana to pop it. Bounty Hunter, he just denied himself to a neutral creep. Nothing too interesting, just want to be back faster at base. Now Bone7, he's just jungling a bit, just giving the lane to the support so they can get some levels at the same time. But they're gonna go after him, but he's level 7, and it's actually just level 6, level 5 on the Beastmaster. He's taking a lot of them, so he's gonna go down. And now 966, he went in aggressive and was able to get the kill. Did have to put Sonic Wave for it on of cooldown, but and doesn't have the mana to blink, nor the cooldown. Now he has mana, but there's still the cooldown, and Cancel can easily kill him in that time. With that, it turns into a 1 for 2 trade again in the favor of Kaipi here. Strong guy, yes, to this, uh, yeah, yes, to destroy this tower. Nothing else to do there than deny it. See, Bone Seven, he can pick up his uh, his bling there now. See what's what's he gonna drop here. I, I would say put the uh, fairy fire away. You're a little bit more reliant on your mana, so we'll see what he does. What he's gonna do. He's actually gonna both be the fairy fire as well as the mango to be sold. Kinda surprised me, I guess he wants to make space for... Maybe smoke? Hmm. Save Monarch, okay, Buffney, they both see each other. Fisher comes out, Telekinesis is there, just drops him down again. I don't think they can really follow this because he's a little bit too fast and too close to the tower. Now the spin comes out and now Bone7 comes in with the dual hand of God's cast pop. But he's not gonna be healed enough by this. And Bone7 now turns around with the Echo Slam also coming out from Kia. They are able to kill off Furkan as well. Strong Avoon was looking for a rotation in, but after he saw the teammates die, he quickly realized that that's not gonna happen anymore. As we also see an Iron Talon here. Oh, another Death Warp popped here. Strong Guy, can he stop this one? He's not microing the Mud Column. Oh, that's not his Mud Column anyway. Never mind. Cancel in the end, picking up the kill and now going for a little bit of a push here on the tier uh, 2 emit. Seems I need to update the, the game. I'm sorry about that. I thought it was good. Yeah. Let's go into the mobile then. Let's keep an eye on uh, Bone7. He seems to be eyeballing this uh, this juggernaut. Or is it the other way around? With the creeps there? Oh, ho, ho, nice and I there by Furkan. And yeah, Bone7 is not gonna just let that one go. He's gonna pick up uh, the third dual victory here. Can't wait until he's level uh, 11. He's gonna get so much more dual damage out of this one. Cancel. A little bit deep. Okay, but at least we're able to pick up another kill here on bottom with the uh, Bounty Hunter. But really, the fight here is what we're gonna look for. Sonic Wave gets put on cancel, but not enough damage. He will survive for now. Now, Bone7 is still looking after Strong Guy, and he should be able to get him here. Bone7 taking a lot of damage from the creeps here, but he will just TP out for now. They have nothing to really stop this one. There we go. Even the Shackle used on the creeps to make sure that they don't 
do anything else. Now the rotation comes in for Furkin. He has the Omni Slash. He goes on Kia. He should have spawned, but... Ooh, what? He's not gonna escape here, right? Now nah, Furkin is too fast. There we go. And they even just used the Fade Ball to secure it. Don't wanna walk after him for too long. Let's see, where's the giveaway? So. Is the Crystal Maiden okay? Oh, I'll just replace it as well. So, with that, it's all set up again. Doesn't seem like anybody is ganking anywhere, so didn't really miss anything because of it. Now Bozeva comes in on top. He's looking for Furk and he's gonna get him as well. Is he gonna get the dual damage? He's even gonna get the dual damage. This Legion Commander is just going out of control. Overwhelming Ults is also so strong against Shen. Having all of these extra minions walking around will just give him so much extra damage. But he's boxing. He's ready for this one. They're ready. Overwhelming Ults comes out now as well. Ah, MNC is going to be on the other side. But Buffy can kill him off as the Echo Slam comes out. And deals so much damage with all these creeps. As well as the Chen jungle creeps around as well. It's just so much damage coming out. And with that, they pick up another three kills here. After the initial kill on the Juggernaut. Midlane is still being pushed in by Cancel. I don't think they're not putting too much pressure on bottom where the Beastmaster is, but they're okay with that. Matt is just farming up there. Almost got his Aghanims. Just uh, 1k gold off, pretty much. Seems like they want to put some pressure now on one. There you go, they go in. I'm not even. Yeah. Sucks to be him. He was laying around really long there and they just wanted. Well, I guess we got the second time now that he was played in a dual save lane scenario here. Let's go over to the network for now. Man, he's ahead. He's just rolling over them right now. He's a Sanji even. What the hell is he gonna make with his Sanji? I guess Sanji and Yasha. Could also go for an Havis Halbert. Okay, it's Sanji Asha. Just wants the uh, overall stats and movement speed and all the good stuff from that. He still hasn't died. He's 7 0 to 3. This is a completely different game from last one. Kaipi showing up this game in last game, I must say. The, uh, the enemy team was also pretty damn good. They really. Positions themselves well. Oh, there's a fight going on here. There comes the Omnislash. Oh, Sonic Wave as well. They're getting low. But they need to finish the job. And they can't. The roar was not in place. It's a little bit too far. So there's going to be Telekinesis. I think he yeah, might die here in the end. But not at least without taking one. Oh, he's actually able to walk away. They're not able to get close. Roar comes out and cancel. But he's still just standing there. They're going to get Chen now as well. And he just they, he just runs away with Rind Run. He's still not able to take anybody back. And now he goes Invis. And there comes Shackles and Bone Self who come in and just kills him off. With the Shackles there as well. And now one. Has to start running away, but he, is, he just can't. He goes down, triple kill for cancel. Furkan, he has to start running away, and Bone 7 is like, eh, I kind of want to kill you. And they're done. 15 minutes in. GG, well played. Good luck next. It's called here, but see after a quick game. And celebratory echo slam in the end here by the Earthshaker. With that, Bone 7's. Easy commander, too strong. They played pretty damn well. All the rotations were more than on point here by Kaipi as well. The ref was strong and they showed up for this game. They really did show up. And with that, I guess we just go back to the break. I'm not 100% sure if the round of 32 is also played. It might be. If it's played, we'll just follow Kaipi for that one as well. And after that, we'll see what we do. Maybe go to NA, maybe not. That will all be for later. But for now, we're uh, gonna go into the break screen and we hope to see you all soon again for the uh, most likely last match of uh, Kaipi of today.